second here. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me go back and share my screen with you guys. Okay. Okay. I want to, uh, I mean, explain a little bit about the distillation. When you have a distillation, basically you have a, a mixture that you want to separate different components. Uh, this separation is based on the uh, boiling point for each element or each component that you have in the mixture. Uh, it can happen that you have multiple components and only have two components, which is the case now. But you know, it can happen that you can have five, 10 components and you want to remove each one. Based on the boiling point of those, you can do that. Uh, that's the case for if you have uh, a petroleum or a crude. This is one of the examples. Uh, basically, you need to heat it up, okay? And then you will have a column, very large column, depends on the amount of components. Um, you will have an exit for each one that you can collect, and it will have a condenser in order to, uh, once that uh, component is evaporated at that boiling point, Okay, it's very uh, characteristic. When they have uh, reached to that temperature, they will change from liquid phase to gas phase. And then uh, um, it will be pumped to remove that kind of uh, vapor. And then it will pass through a condenser. The condenser, what it's doing is decreasing the temperature for the vapor. So basically you're changing from vapor phase to liquid phase and then you collect the sample, okay? So depends on the amount of uh, different components, you can do that, but the only limitation when you use this kind of uh, process for the separation is that the boiling point for each component that you have in the sample needs to be higher than 10 degrees Celsius, okay? Because allow you to have like more pure components that you collected, okay? Um, Sometimes after the first distillation, you need to do, if you want more purity in the final product, you can do another distillation or use other uh, separation process, okay? So I just uh, sharing with you guys how they do for the uh, gasoline. So they can have kerosene, they can have heavy oils, uh, they can have also naphtha. So it depends on the different um, components that the petroleum has they can separate most of them, okay, based on the distillation. Other process that is the one that we are following today is the simple distillation, which is using uh, the heating element, okay? We have the reservoir, which is the distillation flask, and then we have a thermometer connected so they uh, can read the uh, different temperatures. Then we have the condenser. The condenser, it will have water coming through the outer um, shell is not in contact with the vapors, okay? It's very important to know that. And what we pass through that condenser, it will be called water, okay? So basically we are trying to uh, have here like a heat transfer based on the different temperatures. So it will be uh, changing from vapor phase to liquid phase of that product. So the vapors, it will be coming up in the distillation flask and then it will pass through the condenser. When, when they are uh, coming in the condenser, they start to decrease the temperature, which allow to happen that change of phase, okay? And change into the liquid form. And then you will see some kind of droppings, which is your uh, final product, okay? Which is called the distillated, okay? Um, so for today, we're going to use water and ethanol, okay? The uh, boiling point temperature for each one is very big, which one is like almost 80, and the other one is like 100. So we have 20 degrees of difference, which is good because you can have like very uh, good product for water, very pure, and you can have also uh, a good amount of ethanol, which has a higher purity, okay? So we need to compare those values um, like I explained before, let me go back. When you click in the folder for distillation, okay, 
here in the My Courses under the table of content, you will have the uh, three links. One is the distillation um, demonstration video. Uh, I'm not sure if they have all the data, so make sure you use the data for the Word document, please. Don't use the one that is in the video. That's only for demonstration. Then you will uh, proceed to do the, uh, the lab notebook, okay? When you do that, make sure you put the purpose, then you do the um, procedure. You can use also uh, do some drawings for the distillation uh, system, okay? Which it will look like this one because we have the same kind of apparatus to do the distillation. So make sure you have something like that. Uh, it's not required, but it's, it's better to have something on mind what it looks like in the process, okay? Then you need to submit, remember before Friday, the lab notebook, okay? You will collect the data, like I explained before, is in the lab, uh, student lab data here in this folder. Where's that? When you open, make sure you download. I mean, in this area, it's not uh, an issue because it's the page number four and it's only numbers. You don't have any photos. Um, so when you go down, let's see, the page that starts with density. So you will have two uh, samples per, which is the number ones, A and B. A is the one that is in the reserver at the beginning, it's here, okay? Then you collect that. And then you will have, go back here, B, which is the other sample that you collected at this range, okay? So you have two range, you collect two range, one at the beginning, one at the end, okay? You have the mass of the liquid. This is the mass for the liquid. You don't need the mass for the vessel because it's already uh, the mass for the liquid. You don't need to subtract any, any mass. Then you have the volume for the, li the liquid. You don't have also to subtract any uh, values for the liquid, okay? Um, so you will have these two first, which is uh, the one for the simple distillation. Then you have the other two sample, which is label number two. Uh, the first sample that you collect at the beginning, and then you wait for almost like five, 10 minutes, and then you will get the other uh, sample that the range boiling point is so much close to the 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Uh, same thing, it's only mass of the liquid, volume of the liquid, you don't need to subtract anything, so it's already the values that you need to use to calculate the density, and you have the boiling uh, point range, okay? With those, we need to go for the lab manual. Okay, let me go there. In the lab manual, we have on page 32 and page 33. Page 32 is telling you what is the results that you need. Um, and page 33, they will show you how it looks like the calculation equations. So we need to use uh, the values for mass and volume to calculate the densities. One, once you have the densities, we need to calculate the percentage of weight for ethanol and water for each sample, okay? Meaning for A1, you need to have two values. For A2, you need to have two values. For B1, you need to have two values. And for B2, you need to have two values, okay? Because this is a binary, um, sample which you need to have uh, two values for the uh, percentage of weight, okay? Then once you have those, you do the uh, conclusion, okay? But only for Friday, we need until uh, data. You don't need to do the calculations, but if you want to do it, it's okay. I mean, with me, it's okay. But like I require is only for here data, okay? You need to have the values for mass and volume and calculate the densities. Until that time, uh, it's okay with me, okay? Uh, once you have those, you can submit in the lab uh, notebook and the Dropbox folder. 
uh, make sure you do it before Friday, okay? And then you can proceed later doing the calculations for the percentage of ethanol, percentage of water. Once you do the densities, in this um, equation, we have the density for water, which is 0.9097 uh, grams per milliliter. Make sure you put the units, okay? Even that you're doing uh, same units when it's subtracted, it, keep, it keeps the same unit, but once you do the uh, division, it's canceled, okay? Make sure you do that. Uh, we have the density for pure ethanol, which is the value for 0.70, let me go back, 78.9, okay? Which is in your lab manual in page 31, okay? Um, also, you have the boiling points, theoretical for both, for water and ethanol, which allow you to have some kind of conclusion based on the different samples, okay? Uh, it's a question that is asking about that. Make sure you uh, do some, I mean, some some statements for that uh, question. Okay, in the conclusion, um, for the fractional distillation is the same calculations. Okay, so once you have the density for the liquid A two, you need to do percentage of ethanol and then subtract for a hundred and get the percentage of water. Uh, the same thing for the uh, liquid P2, you do first for the ethanol and then you subtract it for 100 to get the amount of water, okay? Based on those values, it will be one question that is comparing about the results. Uh, depends on how efficient is one distillation uh, versus the other one. I mean, simple versus the fractional. So you need to see how accurate is um, the percentage for the ethanol and water, okay? And trying to compare between those. So we have the last, I think that is the last question, the number three is asking about how is the efficient, which is more efficient, the simple or the fractional? But you need to compare the percentage of water and ethanol for both and also see that discrepancy de de depends on the boiling points range that they have, okay? Um, I think that's mostly. Um, any questions? Okay. So if... Mm -hmm. If you can scroll up just a little bit more to the, the next page, 33. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, so for what I'm understanding is that the density of liquid A1, B1, mm -hmm. we have to calculate that. Yes. That's, that's mass over volume, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then once we find those, we, we're gonna figure out all the one, two, three, four percentages that are listed there, we need to find those percentages, correct? Yes. And then, and then the fractional distillation, we have to do the same uh, thing. Mm -hmm. yes. Find all those four percentages for the fractional distillation yes. using liquid A, A2 and B2. Yes. Okay. That doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me let me see if I can do one. Um, one, one. Um, okay, let me share my screen here. Um, if you have ethanol, uh, ethanol is 0 0.789. This is uh, grams per uh, milliliter. Let me do one example. And then you have water, water, it was 0.997, okay, grams over milliliters. And then you have in the same, um, the 6.10, 7.2, okay, 6.10, 7.2. Uh, this is A1. 
you have mass and then you have volume. 6.10, 7.2. And this one is grams and this is milliliters. Let me make sure I'm sharing the correct screen. Yes, okay. So I need to calculate the density. So I'm using mass over volume, okay? That is grams over milliliters. And then using uh, the equation percentage of ethanol, I need to use uh, the values for, when it goes back, pure water. Then I use the density for the A1. And then I use the density of pure water minus the density for pure ethanol. Okay, so let me do that. This is density for um, pure water minus the density for A1 divided by the density for um, pure water minus ethanol pure water minus ethanol. Um, I need to multiply everything by a hundred. So now I have the ethanol percentage, and then I need to have the percentage of water. Um, so it will be 100 minus that amount. So I have the 27 percentage, I mean 28 mostly. Okay. So make sure you use the mass and volume then determine how much is the density for each sample. Then that you have those, you need to uh, put it together in a, a equation, okay? Using the water first, then subtract the uh, sample that you have, and then divide it by the difference between the water and it. Multiply by 100, so you will have a percentage value, okay? This is percentage, and this is percentage. Um, any questions? Oh, thanks for doing it on Excel because I, I, I now can review. I, not that I'm going to do it on Excel because <laughs> this is probably harder for me to just do it by hand. But I, I like that you showed me the functions um, of how to put you know, okay. the functions in those. Make sure you put the correct parentheses. I mean, in, in the equation, because if you don't do that, it will be a mess up, okay? Yeah. Um, make sure you do the subtraction first, subtraction first, and then division. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I can I I can uh, save it and put it later, so you will have those in case that you need, you know, to review. Okay. Um. But make sure, yeah, you have also the values for the ethanol and water, or you can type it out, uh, in the equation the numbers so. okay and once you have ethanol you do the same i mean you subtracted that amount to 100 for the water okay So I will uh, stop my sharing. Um, oh, let, me, let me keep my sharing. I will keep. Uh, I will. I will keep the sharing here for the Excel. I need to uh, save it later, so I, I will put it in the folder under uh, under the destination lab folder. 
but uh, I will stop my uh, the video camera. If, but if you need me, I will stay here until 10 30, okay? And also, if you need me during the day, uh, because you have any questions about the calculations or any question about the uh, questions, you can send an email to me, okay? Thank you.